Welcome to the gathering. Um, this one isn't live, and we apologize for that. I know last time we did the gathering, we did it live. Um, we were all kind of caught off guard about how much engagement and how exciting it was. Uh, there's a scheduling conflict that's taking place right now, uh, so we're unable to make this one live. We will return to the live gathering. Um, we're not sure about in person yet because we love the engagement, we love the conversation. Um, there was just a lot of energy, and we realized that maybe we've tapped into something that, that will work in the future. But right now, um, we're going to start a conversation that we are going to carry on several months because it really is that important. And, and as I give it a little bit of background, you'll understand how important this is. Um, we're going to venture into and try to unpack and, and give some very meaty um, helpful, useful specifics um, about this issue called trust. Um, let, let me give a little, a little kind of background for it first. Um, right now, where we are in our culture, in our society, I think one of the things that's been most damaged by everything that's happened around us with, with social media, with the election, with the pandemic, with masks, with vaccines, is this issue called trust. And, and as I talk about it, you'll begin to realize that that's been one of the issues in learning to relate with people who are different than us, learning to um, follow guidelines, learning to know to how to be during this pandemic, is we have lost this ability to trust. And a lot of things have destroyed trust. Our ability to, to put our life or our well-being or existence in the hands of, of someone else. Um, we're warned about that in, in Scripture. Um, we, we see all through Scripture that we aren't to put our trust in fellow humans, that we are to only put our trust in God. And, and that's true. And we, we stand on that. We claim on that. We claim that. And I'll, I'll hit Scripture a little bit later. But an interesting concept is trust um, has to be between people in order for relationships to be healthy. Even if it's a friendship, if it's a romantic relationship, parent-child, uh, working relationship, there has to be this atmosphere and this environment of trust. And, and as we dig deeper, you'll see why trust is so important. So we're going to spend the next several months talking about trust because as a church, as a community of believers, all in different places in our journey, um, we have to trust each other. And, and I'll unpack some of the specifics. We've got to trust our, our leadership. The leadership has to trust each other. And I think what's been happening in our society, in our culture, has infected everything around it. It's infected schools, and it's infected businesses, it's infected churches. And we've lost our ability to trust and, and you can feel that. You can go into certain places and go like, man, there is something not quite right here. And I think when you boil it all down, it still comes to trust. And so what's been happening out in the world, we haven't learned personally how to block the venom and the animosity and, and the harsh words from our own souls. And we carry that into our families, our relationships, um, uh, uh, the church and wonder why things aren't working the way they should be working. So this is what I want from us as we go into this conversation about trust is I need to be aware of what's happening inside of me. How am I letting influence, I mean, culture influence me? I think Kristen's message several weeks ago was so fantastic. What has your ear Who's speaking into your life and what are the kinds of things are they saying? Well, don't trust this person. I'm just asking questions. And so they create this atmosphere of mistrust. Um, and we have allowed that to reform who we really are. So instead of in a situation where we don't have all the information, we don't have all the details and going like, I'm going to extend grace and say that person isn't intentionally trying to manipulate me or take advantage of me or hurt me, we go to the dark side automatically because we've allowed voices in culture to have more influence and have our ear more than Scripture, more than our relationship with God. So like I said, we're going to spend the next several months talking about this 
issue of trust. We're going to break it down. We're going to talk about specifics. We're going to look at scripture. Um, and, and, and how do we grow trust in how we act and how we treat other people and what we can expect from other people? Because I think in our relationships, we should be able to say to other people, here is what I need. Here's a non-negotiable of what's going to make this relationship work. I want to show you something first. When I used to take our youth to summer camp, uh, trust was a really important part of how summer camp worked. And through the entire week, we would work through this thing called the trust sequence. And it would lead from a very um, safe uh, commitment to trusting someone else to um, a lot of risk. So this is how it started. You paired up with another person who's about the same size as you, um, usually same gender, and you got what was called um, the bumpers up position. So you cross your hands like this, cross your fingers, and then pull this up inside. I'll explain to you why, why you do this. And then you have a person behind you that is right behind you. And you go through this sequence. And this is the sequence. Ready? And there's a person behind you that's standing one foot in front of the other, and they've got their hands like this. So you're in the bumpers up position. You say, ready? And they go, ready. And then you say, falling. And they say, fall. And then you lean backwards a little bit. You don't take a step backwards. You keep your feet planted, and you kind of fall back. Not very far. And that person will kind of catch you, lean you back a little bit, and, and, and set you back up. You do that a couple times. Um, building this trust with the other person. Like, they really have my well-being, um, my best interest at heart. Then you switch places, the other person takes a bumper up, and you fall backwards. Um, it, it's a slow process because there are people who will fall backwards that will catch themselves because they don't trust. So that's the first thing that you do. Then you put a bunch of pairs together, and you create a circle around you. And they're all tight, shoulder to shoulder. You get a bumpers up position again, and you do this. And you go through the same sequence. You go ready, and they go ready. And you go falling, and they go fall. And you go back. After you go back, you have to stay stiff as a board. And they circle you around inside the circle by passing you around. You're stiff as a board. Um, pass you around, and then pass you around again. And then this is what they do. Um, they, then they, they open up, line up, and they lay you down. You still have to stay stiff. Stay, staying stiff is the trust position. Still bumpers up. You lay on the ground. They get underneath you and they lift you up. And then they rock you back and forth real slowly with your eyes closed all the way down to the ground. And they lay you on the ground. If you trust, it's called uh, wind in the willows. If you trust, it is the most amazing experience of your life to just float back and forth. I am not a tiny person. This was a youth camp. A lot of these were teenagers that would float you to the ground. And then came the final one. And you've heard this one before. It's called the trust fall. And you would get on a platform about four or five feet high. You would still get in bumpers up position like this. And this is the reason why you did this is because if you don't trust and you, and you fall backwards, you will try to catch yourself. And there are people lined up in a row with their hands out like this, crossed with the person in front of them. They've braced themselves. And if you open up your hands on the way down, you're going to break some noses. <laughs> so you're, you're standing backwards like this on a platform, bumpers up position. You go through the same sequence again. Ready? And they say ready. And you say falling. And they say fall. Now this time when they say fall, they literally mean it. Because you arch your back and you go straight over. Just fall off a platform. They're in two rows facing each other with their arms interlocked and they catch you. Um, now what we would do sometimes to make it extra interesting is between the two rows under their arms, someone would lay underneath it and watch the person fall. The only way this would work is you trust you, you trusted that row completely because if you tried to catch yourself and bend, all of your weights shifted to the middle of your body and they couldn't catch you. 
It, it's just physically unable to catch you because your weight is not spread out. So the only way that it worked was that you arched your back and went over and stayed arched. So your weight was evenly distributed. So this was the trust sequence. Um, and, and as you can see, that trust was grown through a series of smaller things where it didn't require that much risk, continually stretching their seriousness in catching you and your understanding that in order to trust, you had to um, be vulnerable, you had to take risks, um, and, and you had to put your well-being in the hands of a lot of people that you had no idea who they are. And I'm telling you, I am not a small person. And trusting other people that you don't know, that they care enough about you and care enough for you, that they won't allow you to get hurt, is how we are understanding and defining trust. Trust is, is that I'm going to hold on to this to make sure that it's taken care of because I'm not sure you're going to do it the way I want to do it. It's going to say, I have this expectation that I'm going to be taken care of, that it's going to be done the way that I expect it to be done, and that you will rise to how I need it rather than me having to give up trust because you're unwilling to Elevate yourself to that point. Um, when we did the trust sequence at camp, there were a lot of people who were unable to do it. And I get that. <laughs> um, it's not easy to get to that point. And, and there was no judgment, no condemnation. My guess is those people, you know, either have, you have a fear thing going on or those people had been in some situations where they did trust and they did put their hands in someone else prior to that event and trust was broken and trust was destroyed and they were unable even to do the simplest one just the falling backwards a little bit and so there was a lot of conversation um, that came out of that saying okay what does this tell us about where we are in our relationship with other people what does this tell us about the nature of trust what does it tell us about how we need to be in order for other people to go like yeah i don't know you but I think you have my best interest at heart that I can trust you. Um, this is the bottom line secret before we start talking about defining trust. And that is you can't pretend trust. You can't pretend to trust someone else. You can't pretend that they trust you. Because that is the thing that destroys trust. Is that it's not genuine. Um, those of you who have friendships or you have really close relationships with people in your family and you know that beyond a shadow of a doubt that that person is trustworthy, there's this freedom that comes with it that is remarkable. Real quick example, my youngest yesterday after a series of mistrustful situations with a company that will go unnamed, finally moved from Middle Tennessee to Eastern North Carolina. To where my oldest son lives. And my oldest son said, hey, I'm going to do these things for you. And he showed up at the house before they got there. He had lunch for them. Um, he had turned down the air conditioning so the house would be cool so they could move into it. He had people there to help my youngest son move all of his stuff in. And that's why my youngest son... <clears throat> really wanted to move to be near his brother because he is the type of person that is infinitely and ultimately trustworthy <clears throat> and you want people like that in your life <clears throat> my wife and i were sent pictures we got to chronicle it our youngest one uh put um follow my phone as he traveled from, from just outside of nashville to uh, fayetteville north carolina um, and it was his way of saying, like, I trust you as parents that um, you're, you, you want to know how I'm doing. And it built trust in him that, that he allowed us to enter into that. So we're not going to go a whole lot longer, but I want to talk about what is trust. We may not get to what isn't trust. It'll be the opposite of these. But we're going to talk about some specific things that trust is that have to be a part of your relationships of trust. 
uh, within families, uh, within friendships and, and co-workers, in church, um, whatever. You have to have these things about trust. Uh, real quickly, I'll reference this scripture, and then we'll dig a little deeper into it later. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, that you hear at weddings all the time, it talks about the nature of love. Love is patient, love is kind, um, love doesn't keep an account of wrongs, um, but there's a lie that love always trusts. So we recognize that the nature of trust is an understanding of what love is. So we're going to talk a little bit about what trust is, and then next time we'll talk about what trust isn't. Um, and hopefully that'll be live and we'll have a great conversation. So real quickly, you'll be able to identify some of these elements of what trust is based on the trust sequence. The trust fall, the wind in the willows, and the actual trust fall. Um, the first thing about trust means I, I am for you. Like I am willing to make some sacrifices on my own part because you're important to me. Uh, my oldest had to give up some things that he needed to do yesterday. He was supposed to, my youngest was supposed to get there um, Saturday or Sunday to move in. My, my oldest is working, had to uh, make some sacrifices, but he was for helping his brother move in. So trust is, I am for you. You're not just a cog or a path to this ultimate goal. Like I want to get this thing done. I'm basically just using you to get that thing done. It's I'm going to make sure that whatever it is that we do together, you know that any decision that I make, any choice that I'm faced I will consider your well-being in the process. I will not use you or manipulate you to get something done. I'm going to let that sit a little bit. Uh, the second thing about trust is it's creating a safe place to be the real me. Um, sometimes in group situations, there is this forced conformity, uniformity. Everyone's got to be, we're part of us, and this is what us does and it squelches who we are individually now this doesn't mean you can do whatever you want to do I'm, I'm, I'm not arguing that point what i'm saying is a real trusting community says i know that you have these things here's some good things about you here's some things that you struggle with here's some things that you wish you could change you are still part of this community and we want you to be the best you not to fit into us that you can be trust is rooted in that um, that there's a distinct you that you're good at this. You have this quirk. You have this thing going on. This is what I appreciate about the staff. We are ridiculously different from each other. Um, our, our views of worship, our understanding of God, our sense of humor. Um, there's just a lot of things that we're really different on. But there is this, I so like your you um, how different you are because it adds to this totality of who we are as a staff. Um, that builds trust between us. And, and it leads to these kind of things that we have this relationship. One is risk taking. That I can try something new. I can, I can try something different. Uh, we can experiment because I know you value me so much that if it doesn't work, it doesn't hurt the relationship. So there's this environment of taking risk. Let's try this. And then we try to go like, well, that was dumb. And it doesn't hurt the relationship. Um, so an atmosphere of trust allows you to take risk. Um, it allows what's called compassionate candor. And that is, um, hey, there is this thing that I don't think you realize about you um, that we need to talk about. Um, and an environment of trust allows you to say the hard things. And I can see that happening with our staff. It's fantastic. It's like, I don't know if you realize this, or I don't know if you've recognized this. And because we know we're for each other, it allows us to say those kind of things. You can say the hard things because they, it doesn't damage relationships. Um, I've said this before. They say the help, healthiest marriages are the ones that have really stark disagreements because they know there's a commitment to each other and they're not afraid to say those things and they don't hold those things in. Um, when things are tough, when you're going through a difficult time, you lean into the relationship. Like, I just, we need to figure this out. This is really difficult. This is really hard. And trust allows you to be in places where there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of ambiguity because you go like, I know we've got this together. That we are 
a team. I trust you um, in, in order to do that. And that leaning in together is moving towards you. That when there are hard conversations, when there are difficult things that you have to deal with, I don't move away from you. Um, there's no need to self-protect. Um, I don't want to d dive into the, the mistrust, but when, when there isn't trust, um, there's a tendency to wall off because if I don't think you're for me, I, if I don't think you're going to take care of me, then I'm going to have to take care of myself. But if there's trust, I, I, I can give myself to you in a, in a situation because I know you're not going to harm me. That each person's desire is for the other. And if you look at the teachings of Jesus, there are dozens and dozens of one another. Serve one another. Love one another. Help one another. Um, and that's what trust does. Um, the last one is they take each other for their word. Um, I'm going to say it. I mean it. And you don't have to sift through and try to figure out what I really meant. And I, I was hiding behind... Um, uh, words that that make things cloudy or uncertain it's when you say something i know that that's true because we have a relationship of trust and i know that because there is that relationship of trust you have this um safety of being honest and of being real and of just laying out there because value is on the relationship so that is a lot of information so far about what trust is, the importance of trust, why we don't have it. Um, next time, we're going to talk about what isn't trust. Um, and obviously, it'll be some of the opposite of what is trust, but we'll kind of take it a, a little bit deeper and, and, and go a little bit further with it. But this is really important as a church as citizens of this country, as participants in this community and, and being in relationship, that we understand that we have drifted, we have been pulled away <clears throat> from what used to be trustworthy, dependable relationships. And we need to grow that back. So this is a hugely important conversation that we're going to have over the next several months. I hope that gives you something to um, hold on to as we talk about trust. And then the next time we meet, who, the first Wednesday in September, <laughs> we will talk about what isn't trust and then begin to unpack scripture a little bit more. Um, let me remind you, Sunday, we are back in the book, Dear God, Honest Prayers to a God Who Listens. This past Sunday, we talked about honesty and seeking God. This upcoming Sunday, we're going to talk about dealing with difficult situations in life and difficult people. And how, through those, um, we can find God. So I'm going to pray. We're going to put a bow on this. And then we hope that you have a good evening. Let's pray. God, this is um, an important topic and conversation for us to have. Because one of the things that we have always claimed about you um, is that you have shown yourself trustworthy. That you are dependable, you are faithful, you are for us, you want what's best for us, even if it's a it isn't what we want to hear or what we don't do in the moment. That is always in our best interest that you um, give yourself to us in a variety of ways. And, and that's what grows trustworthiness in our understanding of who you are. And God, you have called us to be that in the lives of other people, to be trustworthy, to live a life that grows and cultivates trust. So God, as we go through this journey in these next several gatherings, um, help us to be honest with ourselves. In what ways have we allowed society to influence us, to speak into our spirit and our soul um, that grows distrust um, towards anything? Uh, that we allow the voice of the evil one, of the liar, to sow seeds of mistrust in us. And then how we can be a change agent, how we can be your hands and feet in all of our relationships, no matter what they are, that we can be one that grows and builds um, and develops environments and cultures of trust. So help us to be honest with that and then find ways that we can do that in the relationships around us. So God, we thank you 
that you have proven, um, not proven, that you are trustworthy and that we can tap into that as we live um, that kind of life in this community. We love you and we praise you. And as always, we pray this in your son's name. Have a good evening and uh, we will see you online and Sunday. So take care.